Hey friends, it's Nathan. Thanks for checking out our podcast today, and we hope this message inspires and pushes you in your faith. For any updates going on in ministry, you can go to Instagram or Facebook at Second Students West. Enjoy the podcast. I want to get straight to it. Today we're going to be talking about a story that I've talked about many times from this stage, and I don't want that to um, deter you from listening or from tuning in to what God has for you this morning. So we're going to be in John chapter 4. And when I say John chapter 4, if anyone is a true scholar in the room, do you know what story I'm probably going to be talking about? You can yell it out. Claire, I know you know. Yeah, woman at the well. (laughs) That's what we're going to be talking about this morning. It's a story that we hear a lot, and I think that sometimes we hear it so much that we can become desensitized to what it's really saying to us. And today we're going to look at it, we're going to look at this woman and her encounter with Jesus and how it changed everything in her life. And the Lord perfectly maps out for us how we can do the same, how we can have an encounter with Jesus and use that encounter to share it with the world, to share it with our friends. Because if we're, if we're honest, if we really look at the Christian life, sharing our testimony, sharing our story with other people is one of the most important things he has called us to do in our lives. So we're going to read a little bit. John chapter 4. Turn there if you have your Bibles. If not, it'll be on the screen. Let's read real quick. It says, now he, Jesus, he had to go through Samaria. So Jesus, before I start, Jesus was on a mission. He was going back to Galilee with his disciples, and he was making the journey. Um, And so this is when Jesus was traveling with his disciples. This is what happens. It says in in verse 4, now he had to go through Samaria. He came to it. He came to a town in Samaria called Sachar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would, have, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater from our father Jacob, who has a well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and the livestock? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks with this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Instead, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me the water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. I'm going to skip down to verse 28. It says, then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of the town and made their way toward him. I'm going to skip to verse 39. It says, many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with him and stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. Okay, I know that was a lot, but let me unpack it a little bit for you. Here we see a woman who's at a well at about, who's at the well at about noon. And one thing you need to know about the woman at the well is that getting water, going to draw water was something that was common, but most women did it in the morning, and it was kind of a social thing for them. They would all go together to get water in the mornings. But here we see that it specifically points out that this woman came at about noon to the well, and she did that because she was an outcast. She was not accepted by society. Everyone um, did not accept her. They viewed down on her. So she came to avoid the people we can guess. And so I skipped a few parts of this passage. I would encourage you to go read it um, on your own. But we see here that Jesus came up to the Samaritan woman, and he, it says, he knew all her sins. He knew everything she had ever done. We know that she had had five husbands and all of these things that she had done wrong. And Jesus knew all of those things, and he still chose to associate with her, to, um, and ca- to meet with her. So today, we're going to look at this story. We're going to see what tools we can pull from it so we can be like this, this woman who went, had an encounter with Jesus, and went back to her town and told everyone about them. And so the first thing we need to answer is why. 
Why, as Christians, are we called to be the ones to share the gospel, to tell, other, to tell others about Jesus? Why? And I found this verse. So I want to read it to you. It's 2 Timothy 1, 8 and 9. Um, Paul is writing this to Timothy um, in the book of Timothy. And it says, So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join in me with suffer, suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. So Paul is telling Timothy here, like, hey, join me in suffering for the, for the gospel. Join me in helping me spread his name to the nations. And so sometimes I feel like we hear it a lot in church, right? Like if you grow up in church, you hear it a lot. Like you need to share your testimony. You need to tell others about Jesus. But a lot of times I feel like we don't know the why or the how. So that's what I want to focus on today, the how. What specifically do we need to know in order to share our story with others? And the first thing that we have to get right if we're going to share our, our testimony with other people is that our testimony isn't about us. Think about that for a second. It sounds a little weird. Our testimony is not about us because we are not the center of the gospel. Jesus is the center of the gospel. That's what we need to first understand. Our testimony is not about us. Jesus is the whole point of the story. And I love how the Samaritan woman, after she meets with Jesus, she goes back to her town. And in verse 29, it says, this is what the Samaritan woman says. She says, come see a man who told me everything I, other, I ever did. She says, come and see this man. Not look how my life changed. Not look how I'm better now. She didn't focus on herself, but she said, hey, come see a man. Our testimony is not about us. And another thing that I found very, I found interesting when I was studying this passage this past time is that the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well, she has a lot of nicknames, but we never know her actual name. This is a story that so many people study all the time, and we never learn her name. And I don't know the specific reason, but I think a big part of it is that we never learn this woman's name because she isn't the point of the story. The point of the story is how Jesus took this woman, whatever her name may be, and changed her life because of one encounter with him. That is the point of the story. Not her name, not everything she did before and how she lives now. Jesus is the point of the story because it's not about us. It's about Jesus. Jesus is the center of your story if you're a believer. The second thing we need to know is that Jesus will meet people specifically based on their needs. We know that Jesus met this woman at the well this woman was probably thirsty, I'm guessing was thirsty. She was going to get water. Water is a basic necessity of your li of life. Jesus met and met, met this woman at the well. And I don't think it's a coincidence that he says to her, I give them, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to drink water. This woman needed water, and Jesus came to her and said, hey, I can give you a type of water, a living water that you will never need, that you will never thirst again. And so maybe some of you, you don't have a father figure in your life. Jesus will reveal himself to you as the ultimate father, as a good father. Maybe some of you, you don't have a lot of friends, and you're lonely, and you feel like you're an outcast at school. Jesus is the best friend that you can have in your life. Jesus will meet you based on your specific needs. How he reveal, reveals himself to you is different than how he will reveal himself to your friend. Jesus will meet you based on your specific need. And the last thing that we need to know about sharing our testimony is that there's nobody else that's, that can do it. It's up to you. There's nobody else that will encounter everyone you, you will encounter. There's nobody else that will meet everyone that you will meet in your life. This is a heavy weight, a heavy calling that Jesus has called us to. And if you don't study and get in his word, it can feel a little, little bit overwhelming. But once you get to know him more, you will know that he gives us everything that we need to do it. Nobody else can do what you can do. And it's up to to you to do it. This verse, it's 1 Peter 2, 9. It says, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. So what I want you to think about for a second is 
do you have blinders on when you live your life? And what I mean by blinders is that, do, are you just looking at what's right in front of you? Or do you take time and notice people to your left and to your right, who the people that are all around you? Because if Jesus had blinders on, he probably would have never encountered the Samaritan woman. And her life probably wouldn't have been changed. And then all the people that she told Jesus about, their lives probably never would have been changed. Something I was thinking about that's so crazy is, I know a lot of you, I know a lot of you, and you pr probably know that I didn't grow up in a Christian house. And so I, my life was changed because of my friend and how they invited me to church one time. That's how my life was changed. And if I have ever said anything to any of you that has um, inspired some spiritual um, longing in your life or that has made you come closer to Jesus, then your life has changed because of the, my friend who brought me to church. You see, there is a heavy way, a heavy calling. And if you live with blinders on, you are going to miss the people that Jesus places in your life to your left, to your right, and all around you. Because Jesus, this shows us Jesus' love for the world. There's no gender, there's no race, no social status, no nothing that stopped Jesus from talking to this woman. Do we love like that too? Or do we live with blinders on in our lives? It's really easy to do because we're so busy. We're so focused on what's next, what's right in front of us, what's the next task, the next assignment, the next sports game, what's next, that it's so easy to miss what's to our left and to our right. And so that sounds really great. And I try to end all, all of my, every time I get up here, I try to end with something practical that you can take away and do to help you become better at this. So Usually I come, try to come up with three things or three points, but today I could just have one thing. And I think it's so important, and a lot of you probably are going to disregard what I'm saying or think it's dumb, but I really want to encourage you to do this. Write down your story. Write down your testimony. Write down how God changed your life. doesn't have to be any crazy English vocabulary words. Just an honest, write it down honestly how God has changed your life. So how do you do this? Three main sections. One, your first section is your life before Jesus. Second section, how you met Jesus, how you encountered him, how he changed your life, and then what your life is like now after meeting Jesus. And I want to encourage you all to do that. There's something about putting pen to paper. If I got up here and I didn't have any notes, so Dr. Young can do that. I cannot do that. If I got up here, didn't have any notes, I didn't have anything, it would be really hard for me to communicate to you anything. And so once you put pen to paper or once you type out your story, your testimony, that will begin to get you to really think about it. You will begin to think about how God changed your life and how, what your story actually is so that when you, are come, when you come face to face with an opportunity, you will have already rehearsed, you will have already written it down, and you will know how to communicate that clearly. So if I can encourage you to do anything, write down your story. And I was thinking in your small groups, maybe maybe if your small group leaders are brave, they can share their testimony with you so you can begin to think and come up with an idea of how you can share yours. Sorry, small group leaders, don't get mad at me. Um, so write down your story. I know it sounds small, but it can change everything and it will equip you more than you think. And I want to end with this because this was me. Um, if you're anything like me, you might think that your story is boring. I think a lot of times we hear testimonies about people who have crazy lives, right? Abusive families who have really rough lives, and Jesus completely changed everything for them. And that's not my story. I've had, I have great parents. I have a great life. I've, I dealt with a few things, but nothing super traumatic has ever happened in my life thus far. And so I used to think that my story was boring, that it was not worth sharing because it was something that wasn't radical or spectacular enough. But I heard someone say once that your story is a miracle no matter what it is. Your story is a story, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, of how God brought someone who was dead, who, someone who was spiritually dead, who was destined for a life apart from God and miraculously, miraculously changed and brought you to life into eternal life. And that is a miracle. So no matter how simple, no matter how spectacular your story is, your story is a miracle and it is worth sharing. Don't let the enemy tell you any different. <laughs>